Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about the television camera in flor fluoroscopy. This television camera in fluoroscopy is also called as Vidicon camera. Okay, this Vidicon camera is the one which is used in fluoroscopy. We also have several types of Vidicon cameras. Among them, one important thing is Plumbicon camera. This Vidicon camera is actually inexpensive. It is not that expensive. It is less costly and it is a compact unit. This Vidicon camera is a small electronic vacuum tube. So, this is the Vidicon camera, which is a small electronic vacuum tube. This is a small electronic vacuum tube. And this Vidicon camera is 1 inch in diameter and also 6 inches in length. And if you see, this Vidicon camera is surrounded by a focusing coil. It is surrounded by a focusing coil and there are two pairs of deflecting coils are also present. A fluoroscopic image from here, this is the optical system. From this optical system, there is a fluoroscopic image which is focused onto the target directly. Okay, in this, this is called as target assembly. So, these three together will form the target assembly. So, the fluoroscopic image from the output phosphor of the from the output phosphor of the X-ray intensifying, uh, intensifying tube, from there the, uh, the fluorescent image which is obtained, that fluorescent image is focused onto this target assembly. This target assembly contains three layers. Outer layer is called as target. Next layer is signal plate and the third layer is glass face plate. So what are the uses of these three things also we should see? The glass face plate is actually important to maintain the vacuum in the tube. Maintaining vacuum in the tube is always is always important. So maintenance of vacuum in the tube is done by this glass face plate. The light will directly transmit or passes through this glass face plate while reaching the target. Then the second layer, so first this is the glass face plate, then second layer, then third layer. So it is in this direction. So first the light will travel through the glass face plate and then the glass, then the light will travel to the signal plate. The second plate in the middle, it is signal plate. This signal plate is actually a thin transparent film and this thin transparent film of the signal plate is made up of a chemical called as graphite. And it is located on the inner surface of the glass face plate. This signal plate has an electrical conductor. It is an electrical conductor with positive potential of around 25 volts. It has a positive potential of about 25 volts. The third important thing is target. So what does this target do? This target is the most important element in the target assembly. And this target is made up of mainly the photoconductive material. The photoconductive material used in the target is antimony sulfide. This is the formula of antimony sulfide. So this antimony sulfide is suspended as globules in the mica matrix. So this antimony sulfide is suspended as globules in the mica matrix. Whereas I have already said there is something called as plumbicon also. In the plumbicon, lead monoxide is suspended, is the globule which is suspended again in the mica matrix. Okay, that is the difference. Whereas this globule of either mica or either the um, antimony sulfide, this globule is actually around 0.01 inches in diameter. And it is insulated from the neighboring globules by the and from the signal plate with the help of this mica matrix. This mica matrix is mainly for insulating it as an insulator from the surrounding globules and also from the surrounding signal plate. This mica matrix serves as an insulator. Why is this globules? The function of these globules is very complex and we will see a it, but this fun this globules will function as capacitors. We will discuss about this uh, function of this uh, 
antimony sulfide globules in mica matrix in a few minutes but before that we will first know some important points about this cathode assembly this um, cube okay, this vidicon camera this vidicon camera consists of a cathode this is the cathode which is element and it also had an anode anode is this is the anode this whole thing is the anode now the cathode is located on the opposite end of the vidicon tube that is opposite from the target and this cathode is heated from the by the internal electric coil this electrical coils will heat the cathode when the cathode is heated obviously the electrons present in the atom of cathode will gain the thermal energy by thermionic emission and they will uh, they will come outside on the over the surface of the metal and these electrons slowly they form the electron cloud now the heating the coil will boil the electron a lot and once the electrons uh, will now and these electrons will now form a beam okay through the control grid these electrons will gain the energy and to accelerate and these electrons will now the cathode and heating coil along with this control grid it will shoot the electrons in one particular direction only okay it shoots the electron at the end of the control grid in one particular direction as an electron gun now as the electron beam progresses down towards the tube as it progresses through the tube it moves away from this beyond this control grid influence and it will enter the electrostatic field of this anode it has entered the electrostatic field of the anode anode is approximately 250 volts positive potential when compared to cathode so because of this positive potential when compared to cathode these electrons are now accelerated with high velocity they will gain high velocity in the anode okay the anode will extend across the target as a fine mesh as a fine mesh it will uh, th this anode is present as a fine mesh across the target till this target is reached okay extends across the target end of the tube till the target end of the tube or till the target is reached the anode is present as a fine wire mesh okay so this wire mesh and the signal plate there is a signal plate here and the wire mesh here both these will form the uniform decelerating field adjacent to the target so the signal plate which we have seen here it is positive 25 volts whereas the anode is 250 volts so the difference between anode and this positive signal plate is around 225 volts difference is present right so this There is a decelerating field which is applied over the uh, over the over this anode also. So once it has accelerated slowly, the electrons will get deflected to one direction and they start decelerating. So while they get decelerated, that is there is decreased velocity. When there is decreased velocity, slowly by the time they reach the target, they will have the less velocity or least velocity. Or they have now have the less velocity by the time they reach the target now one important thing that this electron beam will scan the photoconductive globules here so as a result electron beam should not spread out or it should not go or spread out throughout the tube so what we need is that the electron beam should be focused at one particular part of the tube so that it works properly okay so this electron beam in order to get focused at one particular part of the tube or one particular section of the tube we have something called as electromagnet focusing coil okay there are two coils here there is one electromagnetic focusing coil second deflecting coil so what does this do there is electromagnetic focusing coil this electromagnetic focusing coil is wrapped around this vidicon tube and this coil extends to almost whole length of the tube see this from the cathode it is extending whole length of the tube 
This electromagnetic focusing coil will produce a magnetic field around the magnetic field is produced around the, all over the tube that is parallel to the long axis of the tube it is not produced in the way that i drew but it is the a magnetic field is produced parallel to the pedicon tube so there is a magnetic field which is produced in this direction by these uh, electromagnetic focusing coils okay these magnetic field will keep the beam of electrons has a narrow bundle the main aim of this magnetic field is to keep the electrons as thin straight narrow bundle of electrons and they prevent the spreading of electrons the electrons will now progress or they go to the tube in a series of oscillating spirals and finally they will uh, they will they will strike the target at one particular focused spot okay this is by focusing coil there is one more coil which is called as deflecting coil why is this deflecting coil useful so this deflecting coil there are two there is there are two deflecting coils two pairs of deflecting coils will wrap around this vidicon tube we have vertical deflecting coils which are shown here these deflecting coils will have voltage flowing through the tubes okay so the electron beam so these deflecting coils will have positive and negative charge this electron obviously has negative charge so this electron will move in this direction again in the next cycle this is made negative charge and this is made positive charge in such situation the electron will flow in this direction so the use of this deflecting coil is to make sure that the electrons are concentrated at a particular point in the target rather than the whole part and the electron beam can be deflected either upwards or downwards based on our requirement so it is that is also important why because okay we will learn why in a few minutes because i'll come back to this concept of deflection in a few minutes but before that let us now learn how a video signal is produced okay so this is the globule this is the target okay so this target if you see if you draw this target in a better way so this is the target which is seen here okay now uh, this target this is the target of the tube so in the target as i have said there is a globule which is made up of antimony sulfide okay there is a globule sorry there is a globule made up of antimony sulfide and there is a signal plate and there is a glass face plate the signal plate is made up of graphite right now the globule this is the target this is the globule in the mica uh, matrix this mica matrix will prevent the will uh, uh, prevent the conduction of charge so this is for insulating properties right now what actually happens is that you see here from here the light will flow right there is light flowing from the this is here there will be output phosphor the output phosphor which we have learned in the last class from the output phosphor gets you know it is uh, um, it gets focused through the lens and it is focused on a spot in the target okay this spot or this particular spot is what we are seeing here now what happens is this electrons this light when it gets when the light strikes the globule the globule will absorb the light when the globule will absorb the light the electrons are emitted these electrons are called as photoelectrons okay these photoelectrons are emitted these photoelectrons are attracted by the anodes and they are removed from the tube so once the light strikes so what is happening here is that i'm erasing everything when the light strikes this part okay this light will activate the uh, target this target has globules which are containing uh, antimony sulfide okay in mica matrix so from the antimony sulfide the electrons these for the when the light strikes the target from the target the electrons are removed obviously there is a 
wire mesh of anode which is present this anode is a positive charge right so these electrons are now attracted by the anode and they are removed from the tube meaning the globule has lost the electrons electrons are lost when the electrons are lost the, in the globule there is positive charge is seen now this globule is present in the mica matrix this mica matrix will provide insulation to the globule the globule is insulated from its surroundings so it behaves as a half of a tiny capacitor and this globule will draw a current to, through the conductor signal plate because it is insulated from the surrounding this will send signal through the signal plate to the chipped signal a small signal is sent through this the current will flow onto the signal plate and this current will be ignored or it is clipped this this current will not be recorded okay like similar events like this will occur over the entire surface of the target we need a brighter area with more photoelectrons than the dimmer area to produce stronger charge or stronger signal which we require so what how does this occur Now what happens is now at this stage the mica globules are positive now we have the electron beam right this is the electron beam i have said this electron boom beam this deflecting coil will will rotate actually this deflecting coil is present right this deflecting coil will move okay when the deflecting coil is it does not move sorry this deflecting coil is provided with voltages that is alternate voltages we will alternate the voltage present in the deflecting coil by increasing and decreasing the voltage in the deflecting coil the electron beam starts to move up and down so that means at one point it will concentrate here then again it will concentrate here it will concentrate here like that it will concentrate like first it will be here and again next time it will go here again it will go here again it will go here by increasing and decreasing the voltage or alternating the voltage the direction of the electron beam will change first of all when the light falls onto the target L target so first and foremost what happens is the light will pass on to the target the target also not on this point this lens optical system is kept in such a way that first the light will pass on to the target here then still once when the light falls here the electrons are removed and these electrons are uh, absorbed by the anode again here the electrons are absorbed so the whole target electrons are completely absorbed when the electrons from the whole target are absorbed then what happens these targets becomes the positive charge okay now the whole target has become positive charge now the electron beam will scan the entire image stored in the target what happens is this electron beam will first go and focus on this part here there are positive right positive is nothing but holes so these electrons will come and they will fill the holes and when they fill the holes a tiny this will discharge the tiny globule capacitors First, yeah, these electrons will fill the holes present in this. Slowly, electrons will come and they'll fill the holes present in this. When the electrons fill the holes, okay, when the electrons fill the holes present in the globule, this at this stage the signal is sent. At this stage, the cap this acts as a capacitor, and this capacitor will get discharged, and the electrons will move through the signal plate and. they will enter the resistor and from there the beat voltage appears across the resistor and a video signal is sent is sent and this will result in formation of video signal but the main important thing is that these globules are not dist or not all these globules are discharged at a time first this electrode first the electron beam will focus at this spot and discharges the globule resulting in some video signal again this then the 
then the deflecting coil is either decreased voltage is changed when we change the voltage the electron beam will now focus on this point and here the holes are uh, the electrons will now uh, will now enter into the holes at this point and then once the electron enters into all the holes at this point this will result in production of video signal again then again the deflecting coil will change then it goes to the next spot next spot like that the electron beam will move from one dot to another dot and slowly it discharges probules one by one probules present in the target one by one and has a result the video pulses are produced one after the other meaning a series of video pulses or video signals are produced from the same signal plate but it separated in time so as a result each pulse which is present here it will correspond to the each location at the target so when we arrange all these video pulses based on the on their location we get the actual image of the camera so this is about the vidicon or television camera one more type of camera which is present which is called has charge coupled tv camera so what is this charge coupled tv camera in charge coupled tv camera it is a semiconductor device and it can store charges in local areas and it can produce appropriate signal from outside so this is nothing but a tv camera just like a television camera which we have seen the functioning of this charge coupled tv camera is similar to that of television camera but the only difference is that first and foremost the light are focused on the photo cathode and electrons are liberated and these electrons are captured in little buckets they are captured in little charge buckets built into a charge coupled device so this is a charge coupled device onto a charge coupled device these electrons are captured the electrons are captured from one row to another row slowly one after the other the electrons are captured once the electrons are captured the read out process is only the difference this is similar to video vidicon camera but here first one by one one bucket after one bucket the charge is the charge coupled device is read out by the charge in the charge couple moved from one bucket to another bucket see first this is the first row read from this row it goes to the output and again from this row it goes to the first row and it is read outside then from the third row the signal will go the charge will go to the second row and from there to first row and then from the output then from the fourth row to third row third to second row second to first and first to output so this is how if this is one uh, charge coupled tv camera one after the other the charges from will move from one bucket to the another bucket and at the end the electrical signal is red so this is about the charge coupled digital uh, charge coupled tv camera and finally one more important thing that we have to learn is about the television monitor so this is the last link in the tv chain the last link the tv chain when we have camera we have seen camera control unit we have seen now we are seeing the monitor which is important right the tv monitor is the last and final thing now this is the tv camera okay in the tv camera there is one this tv monitor actually it contains a picture cube and it also contains some uh, buttons to regulate the brightness of the contrast so the picture tube is this is the picture tube which is similar to the vidicon camera this tv monitor is also a is in vacuum okay and it is a vacuum tube and it contains similarly it has a cathode and it has a control uh, grid so this is the electron gun this cathode will when the current passes through the 
cathode the electrons are released from the cathode and it forms an electrode cloud by thermionic emission when the electron gains the charge necessary to overcome this space charge effect the electrons are will come out of the electron gun in a thin beam of electrons will come out these electrons will now there is these electrons will have an acceleration with the help of the acceleration they will reach the anode here the main difference is that there is focusing focusing coil here is present and there is deflecting coil these focusing coil and deflecting coil are wrapped at the neck of the tube whereas here in the actual vidicon camera the focusing coil is present almost in the entire vidicon camera whereas deflecting coil is present only in the, in the near the anode whereas uh, in the um, television monitor the focus coil is present here and the deflecting coil both these are present at the neck of the tube and these will control the electron beam which reaches the target okay the brightness of the individual uh, individual uh, dots which are present the brightness of the individual dots in the picture is mainly adjusted or mainly controlled by the control grid this control grid which is present here this control grid will receive video camera from the camera control unit so what actually happens is into the control grid we have video signals these video signals are mainly received from the camera controlled unit so this camera control unit will send video signals and these video signals are are are, uh, are transmitted to this control unit this control unit will produce the electrons just like the similar cathode okay the amount of electrons are the number of electrons which are produced electrons which are produced is regulated by this camera control unit and this will produce a bright area in the television picture so this control grid will allow a large number of electrons to reach the focused screen okay this is the focused screen through this focus screen that this control grid will allow the electrons to focus onto this focused screen Flo sorry in into this fluorescent screen now this deflecting coils will function the deflecting coil will have differences in voltages it will increase alternate increase and decreasing voltage and has a result each electron each video signal based on its position the deflecting coil will work and this will uh, uh, produce the electron beam at different you know locations of the fluorescent screen based on the position of the video signal the anode is also present inside the uh, surface inner surface of the picture tube and if this anode is present near the fluorescent screen this anode carries a potential of around 10000 volts so the, the anode will have potential higher than the anode of the camera tube the anode of the camera will have potential of only 250 volts whereas anode of this television monitor will have a potential of around 10000 volts so the electron beam which is accelerated at a higher velocity will strike this fluorescent screen the electron beam will strike this fluorescent screen when the electron beam strikes this fluorescent screen it will emit large number of photons okay these photons these light photons are emitted over the uh, tube and they these light photons are the one which are visible as the television image there are some of the secondary electrons might also be set free and these secondary electrons which were, which would have been those are absorbed by the anode uh, out of the picture tube and anode and they are conducted out of the picture tube now this television picture tube or television monitor always has some residual gas is present whenever there is some residual gas present in the monitor it should be vacuum but if there is any residual gas which is present in the monitor this residual gas should be removed from the monitor by ion trap 
which is located at the end of the monitor. Here there is an ion trap. This ion trap will remove the residual gas formed in the monitor. Nowadays we have got color monitor. Okay, this is black and white. There are also color monitors. Color monitors will have similar type of electron guns, but they are present for three colors. There are three fluorescent screens. The fluorescent which is present here, this is different for each type of color screens. So if you want color monitor, the fluorescent screens, here the fluorescent screen present, there are three types of fluorescent screens present in this color monitor, one for red, one for yellow, and one for blue. So these fluorescent screens are responsible, and these fluorescent screens will uh, produce the actual color in the color television. So this is about the fluoroscopic image viewing. Thank you.